And good morning, everybody, and welcome here to Dover International Speedways. We're getting set for qualifying to set our grid for race number four of the PCS Array Foster Series. As cars are currently appearing here on Tippit Road, and we're going to get started with our qualifying session. A couple of stories we'll get to during the course of the session. Some drivers have already started their first lap time. That's because their pit stall was behind the start-finish line. And we're going to start with C.J. Bracken in the five. In the Valvoline car this week, of course, ignored says first lap. It's because his pit stall was behind the start-finish line. So after he crosses this lap, it will be his actual first-time lap. Thirty-minute session to see who will start on the pole for this main event race, and his first time is a 42.53, so this will be his actual first time lap. Fitzwater 265. Like I said, this is his. That's because their stalls are behind the start finish line, so this will be the actual first time lap. As CJ goes a little bit wide, a little bit high, coming off turn. Th going through three and four, and his first time lap is a 23.156. And Fitzwater tops it off with a 23 flat. There's Fitzwater in the subway colors this week. Fitzwater coming into this race. 22nd in the points. Dropped four spots as Caleb Hobbs just bounced Got into the wall there. Damn it. I was trying to tell you all these new schemes. Nick Voiles driving the Sirius XM colors this week. There's Sam Davis still in the FedEx colors. His teammate Zachary Taylor in the Interstate Battery colors this week as he nearly got the wall off turn four. And Brooklyn Rogers and uh, Cody McGorvick go or Going side by side for some reason. Oh, give each other room. 94 just bullied her way and didn't want to give room to the DoorDash Toyota. There's Kyle Lingland. With the best friend uh, colors on his ally Chevrolet. McGorvick's in the Sirius XM radio cars this week. Oh, that's actually Daniel Water. I'm sorry. That's Daniel Water in the 45. I forgot to change that driver, so I will do that in this. I'll do that after qualifying. So Daniel Water is in the Sirius XM colors. Here's Carmen Alejandro replacing Nathan Orman. Of course, Ormy tested positive for COVID-19, and of course, he is on a 10-day quarantine, which started yesterday as of this recording. Or by the time you're watching this, the Oyori is almost done with his quarantine. Alejandra originally failed to qualify, but because she came... But because they needed a driver for the 24, she had to come in and fill in for Ormi. Ormi will still get the points that um, Alejandro... What's going on this weekend? Jared Underhill in the King's Hawaiian car. There's McGorvick. Nick Voiles in the 20. There's uh, Kate Anderson, the 2. Chase Brooks in the 15. There's Brooklyn. There's Cody Mc... Or uh, Dean Witter going to pit road, sorry. Jesse Art in the... Uh, I fly Chevrolet. Jesse was second in points last week at Springfield, and she fell all the way down to 13th place in the points as Hartnett puts up the quickest time in the session. There's Heather Gallant, Scarlett Wallace there, CJ Bracken, Jessica Shelton running the Kelly Blue Book colors this week on her number nine machine. Jackie Tang's in the DeWalt Stanley Tool or DeWalt Colors. Ryan Boyer, who raced his way into today's race via the non-charter event. Remy Crampton, who didn't even complete a lap last week at Springfield after her engine blew up. 
she's looking for some redemption here today. Kaylee Rankin in the Celsius number 31. There's James Qualls. He raced his way in via the non-charter race. Tori Gossin, 38, in the Southeastern Equipment and Supplier Inc. Ford Mustang out of Front Row Motorsports. Fitzy going back out on the track. William Davis running the body armor colors this week. This is the blue body armor on his Penske Ford. Uh, the Gillette or whatever it's called on Carlos and that's 42. Paul Minnick running the South Point colors this week. Laney Fredrickson running the Shelton colors this week. Julia Landauer making her debut. She raced her way into this event via the non-charter race along with Reagan Whitlock. Ignore the Flintstones in the background because somebody's watching the Flintstones and could get me copyright even though they don't give a shit. Seth Cole, who also raced his way into this race via the non-charter race yesterday. Jimmy Pinter back here. There's Kate Anderson. That's Cody McGorvick. Of course, I forgot. I had two Cody McGorvicks. One of them should have been Daniel Witter, which that's her in the 45. I will fix it after this session. So there's not a derp. But I'll take a picture of the results and have it over here so I can do the grid for future references instead of doing it on my phone. There's Emmanuel Hartnett. By the way, Kaylee Rankin came into this race as your points leader. This is the guy who's trying to run her down for the points lead. That's Emmanuel Hartnett. And Rankin comes... Rankin, Kaylee Rankin, is 22nd. So she would start mid-pack. And of course with um, Carmen Alejandro running the 24 car, uh, as we had a wreck on the front straightaway, I don't know where the, who, who had all the, who caused the spin, but whoever it was kept it going. I wonder if it was Jared Underhill. Hopefully it wasn't Jared Underhill. No, Jared came up, was coming out of the pits. I don't know where the smoke came from. I will ha let's put it on our nun cam and then we'll investigate. And then we will find that culprit. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. That was David Heller and I couldn't tell who that was. Oh, that was David and Carla Snot. That's teammates. And Carla just got loose. Doesn't look like the damage is too bad on either of those cars as we're back to live action. Looks like, looks like a little fender. Looks like a little bit of damage to the rear fender, but not too much for them to go to a backup. There's uh, Daniel Witter. I will change it. I will change that to Daniel Witter after the session is done. Now, I was going to mention about the 24. Now that uh, we brought this discussion up, um, since the 24 is um, is being filled in, the thing is Nathan Orman practiced this car. And as looks like Alejandro's 38th quick. Nathan Orman practiced this car, wasn't feeling well, ended up going to the doctor and found out he tested positive for COVID-19. Um, he, he has been, um, he is currently isolating. And I also found out, of course, he did, he do, he did get the booster. But, because this is a driver change on the 24, the car will have to go to the rear of the field because of a driver change. Even though Carmen Alejandro is currently 38th quickest, so it really would have not mattered anyway because 
Alejandro would have had a gun would have started at the rear anyway, so as Jared Underhill getting a little tight, currently twenty seventh quickest. But remember, uh, Carmen Alejandro is the only driver that will have to go to the rear of the field because of a driver change. But if I'm Carmen Alejandro and I haven't been in that 24 car all weekend, then there you go. At least she knows these next-gen cars, so she's not cold turkey. If you know what I mean. There's Sean Art in the 99. Sean Art comes into this race 29th in the point standings. After a rough race last week at the Springfield, or had gained three spots. Cody McGorva comes in that critical 30th position in the points. Sean's trying to overcome what has been a somewhat of a slow start to the year for the Texan, of course, his sister going to Victory Lane a couple of weeks ago at Rockingham, North Carolina. Right now, the 24 is currently 38th quickest, so the 24 would have started the rear anyway. You know, the big thing is Nathan Orman came in this race third in points. Of course, like I said, Carmen Alejandro will give the points to Nathan Orman because I will give Ormy a provisional. So that way he could stay eligible as far as uh, trying to get a win and all that when he gets cleared. We don't know what his status will be for next week at Pocono. I do wish Huggable Ormy the best of luck. His brother, James Orman, will actually have to miss next week's race at Pocono because he is also in isolation. Of course, this was right after... Um, but the thing was, I already recorded the non-charter race, which was after which was way before Nathan Orman announced he tested positive for COVID-19. So what's going to happen is next week there will be a replacement driver for James Orman. Of course, James Orman failed to qualify, so James Orman will also have to be in quarantine for uh, some time. And someone has blown up on the front straightaway. Oh, it's Cody Smart. And Cody will have to go to the rear of the field. That's an engine that went kaboom on his Fastenal Ford. And that's huge for Cody Smart. So that means Cody Smart will have to go to the rear of the field because of an engine change. Good grief. And the other big thing is with Rick Witt not making the field, Ormy came in this race third in points. Rick Witt, who was eighth in points, failed to qualify. This is good for a number of drivers behind Rick Witt in the points for them to take advantage today and get themselves in the top ten of the points. Because remember, Rick Witt's going to continue to drop through the standings like a rock. So we're looking at C.J. Bracken, who will be moving up to the 14th position. Reagan Whitlock would qualify in the top 10, so that's pretty good for Reagan. Reagan, the Tails brother. Jesse and Sean not having a good qualifying. Fortunately for the both of them, they will be moving up at least two spots. Caleb Hobbs would start... 40th with the 24 going to the rear due to a driver change and the 17 going to the rear due to an engine change. As Tori Gossett came into her pit stall weird and Allison Liera had to go behind the wall. There she is. What what happened to Allie? She must have gotten the wall. Yeah, she must have hit the... Yeah, she did get the wall, so... Okay. 
But the team quickly repaired that car and sent her back out as far as that's concerned. So Allie will not go to a backup car. Oh, we got a crash. We got a crash. Oh, it's Brooklyn Roger. Oh, CJ Bracken got a piece of it. Oh, Daniel Witter was collected. Damn it. I need to go to... Uh... Oh, female abuse by the old one of Reagan Whitlock. That, or Daniel Witter not paying any attention, not realizing the Bass Pro Shop Chevy was there. And that's a big rookie mistake for Daniel Witter. I understand it's Cody McGorvick because I forgot to change it at the last second, which I do apologize for. Daniel Witter just not paying any attention. Does not realize Rick Witt's there. Oh, Seth Cole got a piece of it. So Seth Cole will go to a backup car. The points leader barely sneaked through. The 94 did not. Oh, and Cody got a piece of it. Well, Cody's going to a backup car. Doesn't matter. He's already going to the rear because of an engine change. And now Cody... We'll go to a backup car. Sean Art gets a piece. Ooh, I don't know. Sean's going to a backup car. I don't know how bad of a hit the 99 took. I see the damage on the front. I don't see any damage on the car. Must have gotten the right front suspension. Right there. Looks like they got the damp looks like they got the suspension fixed and also the damage fixed. But Cody Smart, a bad day has gotten worse. And the 45 will no doubtedly be asked to see the officials after the rate or after the session. Asked what on bloody earth that was all about. Cody Smart got a double whammy. A, his engine blew up, so he was going to the back for an engine change. Now he gets involved in, a, in this incident, and now he has to go to a backup car. So Cody's already going to the rear anyway. Seth Cole, on the other hand, is going to the rear because of a backup car, and we got another crash on the front straightaway, and it's Laney Fredrickson. And she got hooked by David Heller. That's female abuse for David. Or it looked like the seven just lost it. Seven car lost it before David got to her. And in the inside wall went the Shelton Chevrolet. Not just because Shelton, the sponsor Shelton, to clarify. And James Qualls just barely missed it. So did Heather Gallant and... Uh, Remy Crampton. They're going to get that seven car fixed. Seth Cole already in a backup car. What a crazy event here in this session. So the entire row four going to the rear because of a backup car. The 94 has to go to the back in a backup car. The 99, we're being told, did have to go to a backup car because it damaged the suspension. But to be fair, Sean didn't, wasn't going to qualify that well, so it really didn't matter to Sean because Sean was already going to the rear, was already going to start the rear of the field anyway because of his uh, deal, and along with the 45 and the 24. So right now, six drivers, that would be Brooklyn Rogers, Seth Cole, Cody Smart, Sean Arndt, Nathan Orman, and Daniel Witter having to go to the back, had to go to the rear. That was nearly close between Qualls and Whitlock. That was really, that could have been big. That could have been seven and eight right there. But back to my point, uh, Witter... So Seth Cole, uh, getting back on topic here, Seth Cole, Cody Smart, and uh, Brooklyn Rogers will have to go to the rear. The other three 
would be Sean Art, um, Carmen Alejandro, and Daniel Witter. Here's the only difference. Witter, um, Art, and uh, Sean Art just gained some spots. He's up to 30th. Art, Sean Art, uh, Witter, and uh, Alejandro, they were already starting at the back of the field anyway, so it really would have not mattered to either of them because they were going to go to the back. They were going to start the back anyway. There's Cody Smart in a backup engine and a backup car. We'll be starting at the rear of the field. And we did... We were told the 42 and the 43 did fix their damage, so they will not go to a backup car and have to start the back. Yeah, there's Carmen Alejandro. I think what this 24 team's just going to do is just try to get just try to get Carmen comfortable in the car because, you know, she's never been in a Hendrick Motorsports car. We're used to seeing her in the 60. But like I said, the only reason she's in this car is because Ormy tested positive. And Ormy's drivers, uh, Courtney Lynn, Brenda Eveling, I bet you they were probably sobbing. Which sucks, but nothing you can do, so. I think what Carmen's just going to have to do is just try to get some feedback, see what the car needs. Because they had to switch out the seat. And put her in that car. They had to get Carmen Alejandro's seat from uh, RFK Racing after they failed to qualify for this race. Oh, we got another crash on the front straightaway. And I can't... I'm trying to get to who that was. Oh, it's Seth Cole again. Boy, Mr. NNS here race getting, getting abused today here in qualifying. We haven't even gotten to the race. Oh, Jackie Tang got the wall, and Kate Anderson did a good job missing the 25, and oh, Seth Gold's having a miserable qualifying session, and now he's heading to Pitt Road to get his damage repaired. Remember, Seth Cole's already in a backup car. I see some right side damage on Zachary Taylor's Interstate Batteries Toyota. Taylor's been very disappointed in his start this season as he nearly chopped off Sam Davis. Easy there, Taylor. That's your teammate right there. Of course, just going to let you all know, you will see the official starting grid in the description. It doesn't matter what I show you on score four. We got another incident. Someone spun out, and I don't know who it was. I couldn't make it out. Let's put it on our nun cam. We can investigate this one. Boy, we have spins, and we haven't even started the race. Oh, it's Chase Brooks in the 15. And he got hooked by Q-Man. And I believe this was a case Chase Brooks was trying to get to Pitt Road. Quentin Moore was not going to let him get to Pitt Road, so. And spins the select blind, select blind uh, Ford Mustang out of Rick Ware Racing. But uh, Chase Brooks did get to Pitt Road. They will fix his car. He will not have to go to a backup car. Boy, what a chaotic session that is. Cody Smart, we know, going to the rear. Seth Cole's going to the back in a backup car. The 94's going to the back in a backup car. Sean Art had to go to a backup car after he had damage to the suspension, but he didn't he's not qualifying really well. And then and then Daniel Witter, who's been asked to see the officials after the session for that stupid move. Even if they penalize her and send her to the back, it would not make a bit of a difference, if you know what I mean. And then, of course, Carmen Alejandro replacing Nathan Orman. She was already going to start the rear of the field anyway, so it really would have not mattered for that rookie. As I saw somebody disappear coming in the pits. Oh, that's the... Uh, 
Damn it. That's the 42 of Sonat. She got the wall. Yep, she got the wall. So. Well. And Carla Sonat has appeared. Of course, Brooklyn Rogers, Cody Smart, Seth Cole, Sean Art, and Daniel Witter will all have to visit the infield care center after this session. So they got plenty of time to get plenty of time for them to get checked and released. So right now, looking like Witter and uh, Alejandro will be on the final row of the grid. Sean will start 40th. 39th would be Cody Smart, 38th would be Seth Cole, and 37th would be the 94. But Emmanuel Hartnett in the 10 car would be your pole sitter. Quentin Moore alongside. Road 2, how about this? Julia Landauer and Noah Platts will make up Road 2. Row 3 will be David Heller and the 3... Of Shane Lake. This would be Shane Lake's best qualifying of the season. Because remember, a number three drivers ahead of Shane Lake have have to go to the back in a backup car, or in Cody Smart's case, backup car and a backup engine. So Shane Lake's gonna have some good starting track position for this race. And looks like I'm going to get this session done before I have to go to work as of this recording. Hooray for me. And of course, we'll see you all this afternoon. As we'll have the race live stream here on YouTube. As we'll go 100 laps, these drivers will have to make a pit stop. In this 100 lap race. And like I said. With third in points out due to COVID-19. But Ormy's still going to get the points from the Alejandro machine. Which will really wreak havoc on the points. Eighth in points DNQ'd. We've already are going to have a point shaker up there heading into next weekend. The thing is Emmanuel Hartnett. He comes in this race second in the points. 50 points back of the points leader Kaylee Rankin and... Kaylee, as of now, would be 25th, but with three drivers ahead of, with three drivers in the top 10 having to go to a backup car, or in Cody's case, a backup car and an engine change, it's going to make things a little bit complicated, and she would start 22nd. Yes, she would start 22nd. Fitzwater not going to have a good. Fitzwater not having a good qualifying session as of now with the three drivers going to the back. Fitzy would be starting not 37th. He would be starting in the 34th position right where Kyle Langland is. As we're coming to a minute to go in this qualifying session. So Julia Landauer and Noah Platts would be row two. David Heller, Shane Lake will be row three. Row four, Ian Griffith and Ryan Boyer. Row five will be um, Reagan Whitlock and James Qualls. That would be your official top ten. Like I said, I will have the starting grid in the description below. So you guys can know where you are officially are starting and not having to rely on this. And the thing is, we had a gal that started on the pole in Kaylee Rankin. Cody McGorvick won the pole uh, at, um, at Rockingham, North Carolina. And Zachary Taylor won the pole last week. So we have already got 
three male pole sitters in a row. And also, let me tell you this, our fourth different pole sitter is. That's it for qualifying. Emmanuel Hartnett, as the red and black flags mean this session is done. These drivers will now, for those that had to go to a backup car, will head to the infill care center. And they will now, as, the, as these drivers' time should be finalized by now. And like I said, with, uh, three, with three drivers inside the top ten having to go to a backup car and having to start the rear of the field. I'll just put it on pit lane one. One, and that will do it, ladies and gentlemen. Emmanuel Hartnett, the pole sitter. And here's the funny part. The top two in the points have now scored a pole. Rankin and Hartnett. Good job. Quentin Moore will start second. Julia Landau are third. Noah Platts will start fourth. David Heller will start fifth. Sixth will be Shane Lake. Seventh, Ian Griffith. Ryan Boyer, eighth. Ninth will be Rayton Whitlock and James Qualls in tenth. As you look on down through the rest of the qualifying results, as I said, six cars will be going to the rear. Fitzwater will start 34th. Kyle will start 31st. Or no, Kyle... Or actually, yeah. Three... No, let me see. No, Fitzy will start 33rd because Sean Art has to go to the back because he had damage to the suspension on his car. So Fitzy will start 33rd. Like I said, I will have the official starting grid in the description so you guys know where you guys are starting, but... I'm seeing some big names here running in the points. 24 car, third in points. Uh, Jessica Shelton, this is not a good qualifying effort for her. The good news is she is going to leapfrog all of those drivers who had to go to the back. And Caleb Hobbs, not surprising to see him slowest in this session. But he will be starting 36 and Shelton will start 35th due to the six drivers that had to go to the rear in a backup machine, or in Cody's case, a backup car and a backup engine. So there you go. But that's going to do it here from Rocky, or from Dover. Good job, Voils. You just butchered that. If you enjoyed this qualifying session, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to become part of the PCS Raid Crew today. We showed your qualifying results. We'll see you this afternoon for the main event race on YouTube. But until then, I've been Nita Voils signing off. As you've been watching another broadcast of the PCS Raid, the best in our racing since 2017, can Emmanuel Hartnett turn his poll into a victory? You'll find out this afternoon. So until then, 